Hi and welcome. My name is Vanessa Michelon. This is a first of a series of practices designed to cultivate strength and fluidity in your body and your mind. We begin by setting solid foundations and awakening our muscles. So then we can invite fluidity, softness, freedom and creativity in the way we interpret the sequences. If you have two bricks or any equipment you usually use in your practice, feel free to keep them towards the front of your mat. And as always, if anything doesn't feel right in your body, feel free to adapt, adjust. I will offer you variations so you can slowly, progressively maybe increase the intensity of the work or keep it as gentle as you need. We're going to make a start today into a comfortable seated position. We will focus a lot on our lower body to create a sense of routine. So I invite you to find a position where your sit bones can anchor comfortably and your spine can lift upwards. Your hands can be on your knees or on your body. And if you like, you can close your eyes to get a moment to tune in to your breath. So wherever you are, eyes are soft or fully closed. Start noticing how you're breathing right now. If your breath is primarily concentrated on your upper chest, or perhaps you can feel a natural sense of expansion at the bottom of your ribs where your diaphragm is. Notice if your belly is tight or you can allow it to be receptive of your breath. So maybe when you inhale, there is a soft sense of expansion in all directions. And as you exhale, naturally your belly button draws inwards towards the spine. And now I invite you to draw your attention to the base of your spine. So the area of the pelvic floor where your sit bones are. And as you next inhale, imagine there is a stream of energy running from the base of your spine all the way up to the crown of the head. And as you next exhale, allow the same stream of energy to ground you. So focus on the return journey from the crown to your sit bones. And again, breathing through your nose, feeling the energy rising from the earth through your spine to the top of the head. And as you exhale, feel this downward current releasing any tension, moving you closer to the ground. And take this one more time, breathing through your nose. And exhale completely through your nose. When you're ready, you can blink open your eyes if they're closed. Bring your hands into a prayer. And lengthen the prayer in front of you. And then bend the elbow sideways, expand through your chest, and then your fingertips can touch the floor. And again, your rib brush to the front, maybe moving the entire spine. Lift the arms all the way up, bend the elbow sideways like a cactus. And let's take this twice more. See if you can maybe start hinging forward, moving your tailbone backwards, lifting up, and then pull the elbow sideways to open your chest, finding the floor a little bit more behind you, and again, really brushing, increasing that sensitivity to touch. Now, the next time your elbows bend, we take a quarter turn towards the left, place your right hand to the knee, and then stretch your left arm in opposition. So you're working into a twist now. Allow your knee to really anchor you down. And then lengthening through the spine, we begin to circle the top arm. So the top arm goes all the way behind you. Maybe touches the floor with the fingertips. Then you can brush the side of the mat in front of you, go diagonally up. And again, big circle up and around to fluidify your spine. Try to maintain your sit bones heavy to the floor. And maybe again, increasing the sensitivity of your fingertips, noticing the temperature of the things you touch, noticing their texture. And take one more big circle to pause into the diagonal line you visited before. Stay there, finding again a counterbalance between lower body and upper body. And then reverse that little circle and stretch your fingertips as forward as you can. So take a knees full forward fold. Um, you can uh, maybe lengthen your arms further forward, be on your spider fingers. You can allow your head to drop, your chest and shoulders to relax. Nice to stay here for one more breath. And then slowly walk your hands towards your shins. 
We cross the opposite shin in front and take the same thing to the other side. So lifting the arms overhead. And then you take a little quarter turn to that side, left and to the right knee, breathing and exhale, tilt diagonally away from the knee. So find a counter pose, pushing the knee downwards and stretching a bit more to the fingers. And when you're ready, begin to circle the arm backwards. Maybe again, you touch the floor. You can swipe around, move to the front and again around. So allowing the wholeness of your spine to participate in the circle. And again, taking it to the front, maybe lowering down if it feels comfortable, using the head away from your knee to create more opposition. Good. And then pause as you arrive again into that side reach. Take your time to open up the space in between the ribs, stretching your intercostal muscles, and then slowly release and reverse. And find again an easeful forward fold. You can even flip your palms if you like. Let your head drop. Allow your knees to rest, your hips to be grounded. And then slowly push yourself all the way back and up. And now meet me into a tabletop position. So we're going to be on our hands and knees. The fingertips are spreading. Tuck your ten toes under. And moving into a cat and cow, let's power up through the arms and the legs a bit more. So as you next inhale, arch through the spine, look forward. As you exhale, push the foot away, curl your spine and release your head. And again, inhale to lower your chest, lift the tailbone up. And exhale, press the floor away and try and slide your ribcage up towards the sky. Let's go one more time, breathing, we open. Exhale, press the floor to curl. Now, breathing to lower your chest, energize your hands even more and lift the hips up into downward facing dog. And then from here, walk your feet on spot or walk them off spot. Begin to find the right distance for you between your hands and your feet, between your feet. You can also play with walking a bit your feet sideways, crossing them so you're coming off the mat, bending one at a time, pushing the other heel down. So keep the hips piking upwards, but see if you can release your head and start playing a little bit more with your feet. Again, getting super sensitive, not only in your hands, but also on your feet themselves so that you can enjoy and appreciate the texture of your mat, the temperature again of the floor. And in all this, your head is relaxed. You keep on looking towards your feet. Okay, keep the head as it is, nice and dropped, and start walking your feet towards the front of the mat until you feel you are into a soft dangle pose. So your legs are maybe slightly wider than your hips. You have all the weight on your feet, your knees are bent, and then you can catch the opposite elbow and take a little swaying pattern, swiping right and left, allowing the elbows to be heavy. Really feeling that the weight of your arms, the weight of your head, create a sort of attraction, allowing the hips to float higher and the spine to lengthen. And now for the next uh, little sequence, you may want to use a block. So see how it goes. But if you're using a block, take one of your hands on top and just make sure it's slightly in front of you. And then begin to circle the arm exactly as you did before. So go diagonally up. Maybe bend your knees to twist, projecting your chest to the sky. Circle well behind you and then your arm can come closer to your leg. And maybe your palm is brushing your thigh your ankles and the floor, and again, your circle. So use this twist and this huge circle. Yes, to stretch the hamstrings and prepare for your sun salutations. Yes, to soften your spine, but also to, again, get in connection with your body, with the floor, with the air. So appreciating the sensitivity of your fingers, of your skin. And take one more big circle, allowing the hips to react to that movement in any way that feels spontaneous. And then when you feel ready, you're simply swapping. So again, hand on the floor or on your block as you like. Begin to swipe the other arm up and around. And slowly, slowly release your arm and maybe your hand touching your thigh, your calf, your ankle, maybe the floor. And your eyes are just very curious to follow the movement of the hand so they can move together with the arm. 
And if you never unblock, obviously you can stay high up. So maybe you can kind of touch your thigh so you can change the height of this movement. Very, very last big circle. Good, and then release your arms all the way down into your forward fold. And softly start rolling up through your spine, moving one vertebra at a time. Good, as you arrive, lift your arms overhead, take a deep breath through your nose, and exhale, bring your hands at the center of your heart. We move to the front of the mat to approach our first sun salutations. So begin to spread your toes and feel free to keep your feet apart or together. And then spread so much your toes and push so much from the feet that you're receiving a sense of rebound where you're floating your arms up. And then as you exhale, release everything down towards the earth. Breathing lengthen your spine halfway. And as you exhale, strong hands on the floor, step to plank. Pause that for a moment. So spread your toes, spread your fingers. Feel that capacity to press the entire world away from you. And then release your knees, untuck your toes and ease yourself into Chaturanga. As you breathe in, your chest pushes forward, elbows pull in. And as you exhale, lift your hips back and up, downward facing dog. Instead of breathing slowly through your nose, exhaling and go of any tension in your neck. Maybe wiggle the hips, maybe walk on spot. Now slowly walk your feet all the way to the front. Take your time to bend your knees to rise up, breathing in. Exhale, bring your hands back at the center of your heart. And we repeat, rooting the feet to rise up. Exhale, soften the upper body downwards. Breathing, lengthen halfway. And as you exhale, step back to your plank, strong arms, legs can be bent to straight, chaturanga, absorb the weight of your body, and then use the strength of your feet to project your chest forward, keeping your neck long. Exhale, lift up, downward facing dog. Stay here for a couple of breaths. Then keeping your head heavy, walk to the front of your space. Strong feet lift all the way up. Exhale, hands at the center of your heart. We're going to take this one last time. Breathing to rise. Exhale, release all the way down into forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. And again, step back to your plank. Lower your knees or keep them up. Chaturanga, no rush. And really push everything away from you to project your chest forward. Press from your feet, from your hands, and then your back, downward facing dog. From here, begin to lift your right leg up, bend your right knee, open your right hip. So moving to Scorpio dog, you're twisting your hips, allow the left heel to be heavy, and maybe look under your right armpit. Stay there for one more moment, see if you can lift the knee higher, and imagine you're touching someone on your left side with your right foot. And then step your right foot to the side of your right hand, come to lizard pose, you can use your blocks if you like. Begin to rock the weight of your body forward and backwards. So using the strength of your toes to push, move forward, and then the strength of your hands to push backwards. And keep length through the spine. Make sure your right heel is fully touching down. If not, you can move your leg a little bit further forward. Now lower your left knee down, shift the weight on your left hand. And if it feels good, place your right hand on your right thigh, take a slow breath through your nose. As you exhale, maybe invite your thigh to move diagonally out and roll on the outstep of your foot. So you're just moving into kind of a softer version of that lizard. Notice if your left hip can release, but try not to collapse in your left shoulder. So you still wanna have a good pushing action, good rooting action, so your neck is free. And stay here for one more slow breath. From here, your hands come down to the floor. You want to walk them a little bit more backwards. You will understand in a moment why. So you're shifting back until the left hip is on top of the left knee. And then you begin to brush your right toes to the floor. Really sensitive toes. You cross the leg behind you and maybe see the foot on your left side. And then reverse. Your toes go around sideways. Take that rainbow as big as you like. And we keep going. We brush. You're opening your right side to fold on the left, and then you rebrush back. And this is not only to stretch your hamstrings, but also to have, again, a sense of connection between your toes and the floor. 
Take this one more time and then pause when your leg goes sideways. Once your foot gets in line with your left knee, find a way to transfer into staff pose. So you're gonna come up. I'm gonna face your same way. Your foot is fully touching down. Your hips are pressing forward. Lift the arms overhead. You're gonna go towards the straight leg. So catch your left wrist, tilt sideways, and see if you can maintain a soft connection in your ribs, a soft lower back. Extra breath, and then slowly make your way back to center and switch. So catch the other wrist, tilt away from the leg, go as far away as you can. Good, let's go one more each side. See if you can make this bigger. Lengthen, push from the foot from the knees to lengthen the spine more. And then one last time, come up and over, catching your wrist. Okay, look downwards, transfer the weight lightly into a side plank, left and on the floor. Keep the right leg on the mat and stretch your right arm. But now if it feels good, brush again your toes behind you and pull the arm behind you. You can even spin the chest up to the sky, so you're opening a bit more your belly area. And now you can close, yeah? You can take a mini close, kind of bringing your knee in and your elbow in and reopening out. I like to move my whole body up and down. So maybe when you close, you can come down to one side, close into a tiny ball, and then again, use the pushing of the earth away to lengthen. So take your own interpretation of this movement of contraction coming in and then expansion, pulling out. And a variation you can take if your wrists feel a bit tired is to be on your elbows and do the same thing. Kind of a little brushing, like you're moving your tail backwards and then you're pulling everything in. And it is really, really important to feel that it comes from the earth, it comes from the pressure, your capacity to expand. The stronger you are rooted, the more expansive your body can be. So take this one more time and then we're all gonna meet back we find a transition to downward facing dog. So just gonna have your toes coming to the back of the mat, your hands coming to the front and lift yourself back and up. Take your time if you went off the mat, just reset, maybe walk on spot nice and easy. And we have the same thing to the other side. So when you're ready, lift the left leg up, bend your left knee, open your left hip into Scorpio dog. Push so much from your hands that your head gets lower, your left knee higher. And imagine you're poking someone with your toes on your right side. Step left foot on the outside of your left hand. Again, try and get your heel on the floor. You can move your leg forward if you need to. Hands on your blocks if you like. Rock forward and back. And as you rock, you're really pushing from the toes to come forward, from your hands to go back. Just shifting forward and backwards. Slowing down your breath. Changing the position of your hands if you need to. Now, release your back knee down and we move again into that little twist. Shift the weight on your right hand. Start reaching your left and on your left thigh, breathing, and as you exhale, maybe move your knee slightly sideways and forward and even step on the outstep of your foot. So roll and allow the right hip to become a little heavier. And in all this, your right shoulder is still, you know, solid and stable. There is no collapse. You're pushing so your neck is long. Good, stay here for one more breath to open your reflexors and your groin. Then replace your hands, but instead of taking them forward, you wanna to begin to shift the weight backwards so your right hip is on top of the right knee. Once you're solid on your blocks or on the floor, start swiping your left leg like a long tail around you, and maybe you're folding. So the right shoulder, right ear move towards the foot, and then you swipe and get the leg as forward as you can. And again, big swipe. So the foot is light, but it's still touching the floor. And then swipe. And we have a couple more. So expanding one side of the waistline and closing the other one and side. And now when you feel ready to, you can allow the leg to go sideways, transferring your staff pose. So your hips on top of the bottom knee, the full foot is on the floor. And obviously feel free to double up your mat if you need, as I like to be with all that pressure. Arms rise up and then catch your right wrist and move towards the left leg. Trying to go only sideways. So you're maintaining length into the lower back. Back and up, switch, catching the other wrist, tilt, maintain your left leg really heavy on the floor. Let's take one more each side, breathing to rise. Exhale, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And last time up and tilt. Good, come all the way back up into your side plank. So your right hand comes to the side, transfer the weight gracefully. And then again, swipe your arm and your leg behind you, maybe look up. 
when you exhale, fold in anyways. Maybe it's a soft kind of hint of connecting elbow and knee. Maybe we start lifting and lowering off the floor. So you're breathing in to expand, and as you exhale, you can soften. You can bend the bottom elbow and then re-push. Push to expand and fold it in. And again, if you're choosing the option on your elbow, maybe the hips stay on the ground, but you still have the pattern of lengthening fingers away from the toes and then coming inwards. And maybe as you push deeper through your forearm, you can reach longer. Yeah, so take a couple more and we're all going to meet back to downward facing dog. So the very last time you close in, begin to transfer the weight again on your foot. It goes at the back of the mat. Your hands go at the front. Lift the hips up. You're back into your downward facing dog. Have a little walk on spot. Again, twist the hips. Spread your toes. Become even more sensitive when it comes to the spreading of your fingers, the feeling of the ground. Okay, from this position, we lift the right leg up. Lift your right leg behind you. Again, a Scorpio. Twist your hips as much as it feels good. And then from here, step your right foot at the front of your mat and come into an ill lunge. So your right foot is in front of you at the original front of the mat, left knee down. Lift the arms of head, take a slow breath in. As you exhale, twist the chest to the right for a closer twist, your elbows bent like a cactus. Breathe in, rise all the way up. Exhale, take it to the left. Spin the chest, but try not to move your knee. And one more each side. Lift it up. Twist and twist. One last time, lift. Rotate your chest, spreading through the fingers. Okay, come back and up. Twist the lunge. Bring your left hand to the floor. Twist your right arm up. And feel free to use your left hand on a block if you need to. Option to extend the back leg completely for the full twisted lunge. Lengthen your left heel back, left hip forward. If you want to move into a side plank, turn your toes to face the same direction to the right and maybe stagger your feet. Maybe bring your feet one on top of the other. You can also float your top leg or catch your knee. Or maybe pick up your big toe and see if you can push so much into the left hand that your left big toe touches the floor and your legs lift higher. So all options for you, any version from a twisted lunge to a side plank. But be very strong on your left hand. Okay, and wherever you can, step your right foot forward and return into a lunge. And then swipe up to move to warrior two. So lower the left heel and then face the side of your space into a solid warrior two. Take up space. You can go big. <laughs> Spread your toes. And as you next inhale, push from the front foot. Extend the front leg, rise up. Exhale, flip your palms and press downwards. Maybe look towards your fingertips. And again, breathing, rise all the way up. Exhale like a French press. Resist with the arms and lunge a bit deeper. Let's go one more time. Breathing to rise. Exhale to bend. Now reverse your warrior. Flip your right palm. Tilt away from your right knee, but keep your right knee as it is. Your left hand can be on your hip, or once again you catch the wrist. And you help the side of your body getting longer. Back leg is steady. Option to lift the right heel, get a little lower. This is going to switch on the top of the legs. Feel even stronger in your calves and your ankles. So you have one final breath. And now lower your heel with control, extend your front leg. We cut with the arms, framing the front foot, lift the back heel up. Pause for a moment in your lunge, so you're facing again the front of your mat, so your right leg is in front. We move into half split, into full split actually here. So we move forward the foot slightly, and then we lift the left leg up for the standing split. Legs can be bent or straight, and we allow the head to drop, so you're kind of going upside down. Knees bent or straight, hands on your blocks if you like. Now, breathing, push the foot away, lift the chest, maybe look to your front, and as you exhale, bend your left knee behind the right, get as low as you can, just to a place that feels good, the heel is still on the floor. And again, breathing, lengthen your leg any amount, maybe look forward, and as you exhale, pull your knee behind the right, maybe look down, like you're closing into a small ball. And let's take this one more time, breathing to lengthen, lengthen. Exhale, we fold. Now, cross your left knee behind the right and as gratefully and safely as you can, lower your left foot and then transfer the weight backwards until you come and sit. And this is your seated twist. So the hips find the floor, spine is upright, 
begin to twist towards the knee which is in front of you, which is the right. You can use the left elbow to hug your knee, right hand behind your sacrum, and then push the floor away to elongate your spine. And give yourself a moment just to pause and breathe and notice where you are in space. Good, from here, we're gonna let go of the grip. Your hands return at the front of the mat. The right leg begin to swipe, exactly the same motion we took before. Swipe your toes. Now make sure you're really hooking the toes on the floor, at least the big toe. Push into the hands and step back to downward facing dog. And you can be still, you can take a vinyasa through. Just know how you wanna connect the dots before we take this full thing on the other side. Okay, when you're ready to join me, pick up the left leg up behind you, bend your left knee, open your left hip on top of the right, Scorpio dog. So push the weight backwards, lift the left knee as high as you can, and maybe look under your left armpit. One more breath, and then slowly step your left foot forward. It's a kneeling lunge. Right knee gets to the floor, your arms float up. As always, when you kneel, if you need to double up your mat, go for it. Now breathe in to prepare, exhale, twist to the left, pulling the elbows sideways. Maybe look back. And again, inhale, rise up. Exhale, bend the elbows to the other side. Try and reduce any wobbling. Find your strength in your lower body. Breathe in, rise up. Exhale to the left. And let's take this one more time, all the way up. And twist right. Come back and up, place now your right hand on the floor inside of your foot, or maybe if you want on a block, spin the chest to stay or extend the back leg. So we now have alternatives, strong bottom arm. Option, side plank, turn your toes to the left, maybe stagger your feet, maybe take your feet on top, maybe float the top leg. And again, if you feel solid, you can catch your knee or catch your big toe and try to push so much, especially from the right in the index finger, that you can lift the hips, push your right foot down, lift the left leg up. And then really, really high with the hips if you wish. So give yourself a few breaths to check what you want to explore today. Any variation is perfectly valid, it's your practice. Okay, one more breath. And now we're gonna reset the left foot to the front, anywhere you can, as lightly as you can. And then we lower the right heel and move up again to warrior two. So your right leg straight, your left knee lunging forward. Keep length through the fingertips and get ready to again lift and lower. So breathe in, push on the front foot, lift up. Exhale, press the palms down, rebend the left knee. And again, breathe in, rise. Exhale, bend the left knee and press. Let's go one more time, lift it up. Exhale, lower. Reverse your warrior, stretch forward. Lengthen your left arm away from the left knee. Right hand can be on your hip or you can catch your wrist. Keep the back leg really solid. And if you wish, move your left knee forward, even lift the left heel and feel all the power in your front leg. It's quite a lot of work in your left leg. Release the pose, extend your leg to give yourself a break, and then cut with your arms, we go to a low lunge. So you're facing again the front of your mat, the back heel is lifted. Now take a mini step in if you need it, and then stand in split. Shift the weight on your left foot and your hands, and lift your right leg any amount up to the sky. So legs can be bent or straight, you can release your head. Let's begin by lifting the chest up off the ground. Exhale, get closer to the earth, Bend your right knee behind the left to get nice and low. And again, breathing in to expand. Exhale to close. Let's go one more time. Lift and lift. This time bend. Find your best way to softly come to your seated twist. So let your hips find the floor. Once arrived safely, maybe use your right arm to wrap around your knee and you're twisting towards the front knee to the left. Your left fingertips can be behind you, lift up through the spine, breathe and exhale, rotate as much as it feels good. Okay, let go of the twist. So place your hands again on your mat. We swipe the left leg backwards, 
and then try your best to hit your big toe to the floor, push into the toes and your hands and push back up to downward facing dog. Lovely, from here, bend your knees. Let's walk the feet towards the front of the mat and find your malasana, your jig squat. So bend through your knees. If the malasana is a bit uncomfortable, I do recommend you sit on your blocks. So maybe one or two blocks is gonna be much easier to practice it. If this really doesn't work at all for you, Take a time to just relax the head and find a soft forward fold. If you stay with me, we're gonna practice maybe a bit of movement side to side. So option one, you maintain stillness and just get more confident into the hip opening. If your knees feel good, I invite you to shift the weight a bit more diagonally left, if you mirror me. And as your knee goes forward, check the pressure on your knees good. You can counterbalance with your head until maybe the knee taps the floor and then you return back to center. And you try the other side. So your knee goes diagonally towards your toes. In order not to fall, you're moving your head away from the knee. So that's your really smooth counterbalance. Maybe you tap and then you slowly come back. So good for your ankle strength. If this feels really comfortable, as you project your knee and you keep the head as counterbalance, once your knee touches the floor, you can then push from the other foot and come up into a sort of a stuff pose. And then kind of you get pulled back down, you return, use the head and see if you can lift the knee and return. Use your hands for the first time, for sure. It can be a good idea. But again, you can experiment. How far can I move my knee and my head in opposition? Maybe I touch the floor. And then when I touch the floor, I push on the foot, expanding and then pull back. And really, if you use the head as a counterbalance, it is much easier to lift the foot, leaning up. Okay, I think we got the feeling of it. So take your time. If you're still into malasana and you need to reset, extend your legs. If you're still playing, give yourself a couple extra breaths to meet us into a forward fold. If you're in your forward fold, let's begin to walk the legs a bit closer together until your feet touch, and we all meet into Utkatasana chair pose. So bend your knees, and when you're ready, swipe your arms long. Take your time, lots of leg works today. Shift the weight on your heels, allow your toes to spread, one more breath. And then when you're ready, press from the feet to rise up. We move into a tree pose, so we transfer the weight on the left leg, and then pick up your right knee, and then place your right foot anywhere. It could be the thigh, the groin, calf, toes to the floor, your choice. Whatever you have that strength and stability. If you come with me, extend the arms up to the sky and then begin to twist. Breathe in, exhale, cactus shape your elbows as you did before in one direction. And then lift back and up and try the other side. And just keep going. So you're really appreciating how your ankle, your legs, your lower body in general is adapting to the shifts in your torso. So you can feel maybe all the micro, tiny, tiny movement in your muscles, in your feet that keep you in balance. If you wanna go a little bit more free and move your arms in different ways, your head in different ways, go for it. But you're keeping that sturdy bottom leg and then you can kind of fluidify the top of your body, however you like. Nice. Okay, let's move to humble warrior. So place your hands on your hip for the moment. Step your right foot back. It's kind of a short warrior one stance. Right heel turning in. Walk your left foot slightly out if you need to. Interlock your fingers and open your chest. Now some of us will stay. Kind of a powerful warrior one situation. Someone else will take the left shoulder inside of the left knee and push in with the back foot. Allow your head to release any amount of the floor. Maybe the head touches down, your arms shift forward. Even if your head touches the floor, try not to crash. Yeah, it's a very light touch. Square the hips to your best to the front. Give yourself a few breaths, making sure there is a decent amount of stretch in your groin and in your shoulders. Okay, one more breath. Exhale, we all meet back and up, swipe your arms, extend your front leg. Maybe readjust your feet so we're a little bit more in line with each other and with more space, returning to your warrior two. Extend your side, go left elbow on your thigh, right arm in line with the back leg. Now twist the chest up to the sky, press the hips forward. And if it feels good, you can add on binds, maybe wrapping your top arm behind you. If your arms are long, you may find your hip or both arms are meeting each other. 
You can catch your wrist, you can catch your fingers, whatever you're doing, push the earth away, lift the spine and rotate to the right. So make sure there is no passive collapse in your torso. Your legs are so strong, they push downwards and your chest floats up. Keep your top shoulder really actively drawing backwards. One more breath, whatever variation you have, and then slowly make your way back and up. Brilliant. Spin the torso face the same direction. Keep a soft bend through the knees and begin to kind of roll down through the spine until you feel a soft version of your prasarita. Maybe your hands on the floor, maybe catch your ankles, maybe use your blocks, and if you need to readjust your feet, go for it. And as you arrive, relax your breath. Feel free to sway your hips slightly side to side. So give yourself time just to enjoy this, again, dropping of the weight of the chest, dropping of the weight of the head. Beautiful. And then from here, slowly, you can build up into Skandasana preparation if you want to come with me. So I invite you to take your hands on the floor or on your blocks, shift the weight slightly forward, and then bend one knee at a time and keep the other leg straight. And this is really level one where you go side to side. And it begins to give a little bit of pressure on the knees. Make sure the heels stay on the floor. It tells you if, again, that pressure is okay. Or you can make this grow and you can begin to kind of pivot on the heel, pick up your toes and sit back. And again, you can use your hands as much as you need. And then you need to come back and up, moving your head forward and then shifting to the other side. So take your time if you want to experiment with this. Obviously, the length of our Achilles will help a lot sitting backwards, so don't worry if it doesn't happen. There may be many reasons, but I really also invite you to use skillfully your head so that when you sit back, you don't throw the head back, otherwise we fall, but you keep the head a little bit forward to come to balance, and this is going to make your life easier. Okay, the very last time you're facing towards the front of the mat, all you're doing is returning to a sort of a long lunge. You're pushing back into the more facing dog, and then have a little rock, a little sway. Do anything that feels good here for you. And then bend your knees, walk your feet to the front of the mat. Remit me into Utkatasana, knees bend, reach your arms long. Okay. So come back to structure, feeling your hips getting heavy, abdominals gently hugging in. Take one more breath and then transfer the weight on your other foot. So we're gonna pick up the left knee now. So pick up your left knee into the chest. Tree pose, left foot inside of your thigh to the floor or the middle stand. So any place where you feel I may realistically stay and practice again the twist. So project your arms up to the sky and then when you're ready, exhale, bend your elbows and spin the chest to one side. And again, lift everything up, grow taller and try and look sideways and bend the elbows and then come back and up. And as you do it, again, do your best to not to move the hips. So you're gonna try and keep the hips facing the front. Take your time here, knowing that falling is part of the process. That's the only way we learn. Nervous system needs some little <laughs> hiccups on the way to kind of recalibrate and know exactly how much twisting, how much stillness we need. Okay, next time you can place your hands on your hips and step your left foot back moving into kind of a short stance for your humble warrior. Left heel turning slightly backwards. You can open your right leg slightly sideways and then interlock your fingers and gently open through your chest. And this is where you can stay or you project your chest forward and maybe bring your right shoulder inside of your right knee. Maybe your head lowers and your arms come to the front. So choose whatever variation suits you today. If you go for humble warrior, Try and keep the outstep of your left foot on the floor and square the hips. Breathe slowly through your nose and exhale completely. We come all the way back and up and reopen, maybe in a bigger stance for your warrior too. So allow again, arms and legs to widen. Right elbow on your thigh, left arm lengthens, you are into extending side angle. Spin the chest up to the sky. If you have any variation you want to play with, maybe turn your arm inwards, find a half bind or full bind, and then see if you can really rotate your left shoulder backwards, moving the hips forward. Keep lengthening your head away from the left foot. See if you can soften your breath. 
All right, slowly push the floor away, come back and up, spin the toes to face the same direction. And we go again in that soft prasadita. So soften your knees, roll down through the spine, allow your upper body to rest. And again, notice what your body wants to do. Maybe again, some little bending and stretching, maybe stillness. Maybe you wanna practice against Skandasana and now I will offer you maybe a little extra options if you wanna play. So we just keep going to one side, maybe foot on the floor, maybe pivoting, maybe sitting on the floor. And then you just reverse it. And if you don't need your hands, you stay upright, really pushing from the feet to find again, lightness in the upper body. Now, if you feel very comfy on the floor, you can, Keep going backwards with the spine slightly. Same hand of the straight leg goes behind you and you can swipe into a wild thing, a variation wild thing. So the hips lift, chest moves up and back. And then you go again sideways with your head. Your head moves forward and the movement of the head forward helps you make your hips lighter and you go to the other side. So it's very smart the way you use your head. You go back, you keep the head forward slightly at first at least. Then your head goes sideways, then your hand goes on the floor, and then you swipe and you move into the wild thing if you want. And then again, your head circles. And you're using the weight of the head to pull you up and then return. And obviously, as you get kind of stronger in this practice, maybe it's not that much head movement, but see if you can use these counterbalances in the body smartly. If you prefer to be still, you stay still. We're gonna meet in about 10 seconds and we continue to close this sequence. Okay, very slowly, let's all meet back into Prasarita. And then crawl the fingertips to the front of the mat to refine your lunge and then push back, downward facing dog. All right, release your knees on the floor. We move into shoelace, we start grounding down again. So if you like this entry, cross your right knee in front of the left, separate your shins and begin to sit back. And as you sit back, you can even sit on a thin block if you like. If your knees don't feel quite right, you can extend your front, the bottom leg frontal. And then wherever you are, you can start slowly releasing your chest, your arms, maybe close your eyes. So if you maintain both legs bent, usually the effect of the pose is a bit more on your glutes, the side of your legs. When the bottom leg is straight, it may go quite a lot in your hamstrings. You can also choose which area do you want to focus on right now. And then when you're ready, slowly make your way back and up. You can take a short cut and change the leg or you can redo the same thing, swap in which is in front. So we bring now left knee in front of the right. Allow your legs to separate any amount. And then again, project your chest forward and release in your forward fold. Try and relax your hips, relax your toes. And again, get in touch with the earth. Notice how solid it is, or you're touching with your hands, with your hips, with your feet. Now take your time to come all the way back and up. Release your legs. Make sure to have um, you have a block close by if you have them today. We move into bridge or supported bridge. So if you lay down onto your back, press your feet quite close to the hips with some space between them. And then as your hips float up, Position your block in under your sacrum and it can be high stance, low or middle stance. You can even have two blocks, but find a kind of the flat bone of your sacrum, not the spine where it might feel uncomfortable, but really that sturdy <laughs> piece of bone, the triangular shape at the end of the spine. And then maybe release your hands and stay or even release your legs forward. And this is just gonna open up your reflexors a bit more, maybe stretching your quads that work so hard today. So whatever you want to be, legs bent or straight. See if you can soften your arms, soften your belly. Relax the weight of your shoulders. And see if you can maintain your chin perpendicular to the floor. 
And use this moment to consciously start slowing down your breath again. Taking all the time you need to breathe in and all the time you need to breathe out. Good. When you're ready, you can gently press into your feet, walk them back if they are elongated, lift the hips off your block and allow your sacrum to just release to the floor. Good. Let's keep the knees bent and the feet just open as wide as your mat. And we finish here with a bit of a knee rocking just to be free and soft. The arms widen and very, very lazily let your knees drop to one side, feeling the instep and outstep of your feet touching the ground and then go to the other side. Just kind of like a massage in your feet, your inner thighs, outer thighs and lower back. And if your spine wants to intuitively and freely sequence and follow the movement of your knees, just let it happen. Yeah. So release any necessity to control the movement of the head and your shoulders. Allow the rest of the body to follow the movement of the knees. And then if it feels good, you can begin to take your knees into your chest and just keep on rolling gently right and left with a little hug. Knees can be together or apart. You can even cross your ankles and just massage your lower back. <sighs> release your breath, release any tension through the exhalation. And then allow your legs one by one to find the floor. And it's time for you and for me to enjoy Shavasana. Legs may be slightly apart. Arms can be on the side of your body or on your body. And if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes or keep them soft. And give yourself time to land, to reconnect with the strength, with the support of the earth. And allow the legs to be exactly as they want to be. Uh, it is quite normal to have one leg a bit more rotated out, the other one more in. So just let your legs, your toes to point in any direction they want. And if there is anything you have to adjust to feel more comfortable, please feel free to do it. We close again, inviting that conscious breathing running through the spine into our awareness. If you want, come with me. When the next inhalation comes, you can imagine there is a line of energy drawing from your tailbone through the spine to the crown of the head. And then as you exhale, you exhale from the top of your head through the spine, through your tail. Again, you're breathing in from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown. Exhale out from the crown, through the spine, through the tail. And take a couple more in your own time. Feel free to slow this down. And when you feel ready, you can very gently begin to wake up your body and maybe roll over to one side. And then as you press the floor away, you can still keep your eyes closed, but refine your way into seated, anchoring your sit bones downwards, floating your chest upright. Take your hands into prayer or your hands on your heart and give yourself a moment to close this experience today. Thank you very much for moving with me. I hope to see you very soon again on your mat. Thank you.